Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kenny Main, and I wish to formally welcome you to our this, this evening panel discussion, where we will be discussing the beer path, we are having you discuss the beer path solution, urban path solution, with a focus on marine and coastal environment. This panel discussion is part of the plastic sigillae activity, which also falls in the plastic big garden movement, which is a program um, that is being put by the Sustainable Distance Council, where we encourage persons to go plastic free and to adapt a new lifestyle towards plastic and pollution in general. Tonight we have an um, extinct group of panelists and our very own moderator, Ms. Chisa King, who is also a member of, of the Sustainable Distance Council. Ms. Chisa King has a keen interest in sustainable development, conservation, and preservation of marine resources. She also utilizes performing arts along with creative and innovative techniques in order to create avenues to increase outreach and awareness of the vulnerability of the marine environment and to demonstrate the potential of the blue economy. One of her proudest career moments was when she served as the officer with responsibility for the establishment of the first marine management area. Mrs. King is a certified, M certified MPA manager and sustainable ocean initiative trainer. Mrs. King has received numerous awards and honors and her most recent includes Sankis Sustainable Destination Council Foundation member, Sankis and International Women's Day Award, Blue Economy, and an induction into Sankis Pioneering Women's Gallery for first female to serve as a marine biologist. As you can see, Ms. King is more than qualified and experienced to lead this panel, and I will now turn it over to her. Take it away, Ms. King. Good evening to um, the listening and viewing audience. Thank you so much for joining on any one of the social media pages or channels that you have been joining us. Or if you're joining us live from um, Channel 5 News, right? Um, we have such an exciting, exciting, exciting time for you. A amazing time, a fantastic time ready for you. And um, I'm going to introduce our panels right after this video. What are you doing? Don't just drop that plastic bag there. I heard that sea turtles and fish in the ocean can try to eat them and choke. We should take it back with us. Why can't I just leave it there? It's not bothering anyone. We're all the way up here in the mountains, so far from the ocean. Who could this one bag possibly affect? I'm not picking it up. plastic bag here. Don't they know it could have hurt my baby? Uh oh, when the rain falls, the guts turn into rivers and everything in them gets carried down the mountain. Look out! Look out! Who would leave a plastic bag here? Don't they know we could have drowned and none of their crops would have been pollinated? Turtle doesn't mistake that plastic bag for a jellyfish. Mmm, jellyfish. I've been swimming for days all the way from Nova Scotia, Canada, so I can nest near St. Kitts and I'm starving. Wait! Be careful! One of those jellyfish is actually a plastic bag. Can you tell which one? Oh, my flipper, I didn't realize that. Thank you so much for showing me the difference. Why would someone leave this plastic bag here? Don't they know I could have eaten it accidentally and choked?
All right, and we are back. Um, I know you would have heard and um, well, not seen, well, you've seen familiar sights, but you would have heard familiar voices, and those voices are persons who are very involved with conservation messaging. And so, again, they were really excited to get involved with that particular project. Um, now we have somebody else, and it's our first panelist, Mr. Karim Sadler. Where the needs of the world and your talents cross, there lies your vocation, from Aristotle. This quote is simply what gives Karim direction as someone who is always seeking avenues to be more efficient while always looking to share his learning with others. Karim has been drawn to the ocean from an early age, having made it his playground in his younger years. Karim has since completed multiple training programs in sustainable fisheries management and worked with numerous organizations on multiple projects aimed at public awareness and information sharing. In a world that is increasingly in need of a positive, conscious mode of operation, it is his hope to effect change towards a more environmentally aware community through his current post as Extension Officer at the Department of Marine Resources. <laughs> <laughs> Greet your audience. Hey, good night um, to those who are viewing and listening. And we hope that, well, I hope personally that uh, what would be shared here tonight uh, will be beneficial to everyone out there. All right. Our next panelist is Ms. Tonicia Wyatt. 21-year-old Tonicia Wyatt has an impeccable drive for empowering young adults and caring for others, especially children, as they, as they are our future. She is currently enrolled in the Nursing Assistant Program at the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College, serving on the Student Nursing Association Board as the Director of Activities. She aspires to become a pediatric nurse practitioner. In her spare time, Tonicia enjoys giving back to her community in meaningful ways. That, positively, that would positively impact the lives of everyone she encounters. While being quite the athlete, she enjoys playing football with her community club, the Rams Village Female Football Team. Volunteering is her passion as is evidenced by her annual activities with the Department of Youth Empowerment and the Department of Marine Resources. In 2019, Tonicia participated in and graduated from the inaugural cohort of the St. Kitts and Nevis Reef Guardians. Her fascination and enthusiasm for marine species overshadowed her fear of swimming, giving her the confidence and motivation to overcome that fear. Today, she teaches and encourages our nation's youth to join the St. Kitts and Nevis Reef Guardian Group in her capacity as the group's public relation officer. Tunisia. Hi, good night, listening audience. I want you to stay tuned as we have a packed show for you tonight. All right. Our next panelist is Mr. Nikhail Sutton. As a conservationist, we all want to make the world a better place. Mr. Nikhil Sutton is no different. Making his earthly debut on the conservation scene in July 2009, as a then excited eight-year-old attending the St. Kitts and Nevis <laughs> Sea Turtle Monetary Network's annual summer sea turtle camp. As the years went by, Mr. Sutton got more involved with the network becoming a camper, to being a camp coordinator, leading activities, and now as the senior conservationist within the network. Nikhail spends most of his days doing apprenticeship alongside Dr. Kimberly Stewart and the team collecting data and most importantly sharing his knowledge through conservation education to young persons across the islands of both St. Kitts and Nevis. Nikhil holds an associate degree in hospitality management studies from the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College and a certificate in project management from the University of the West Indies Open Campus. 
Mr. Sutton's involvement has afforded him the opportunity to interact and represent his network on various committees across St. Kitts and Nevis. One of his latest accomplishments was seeing for the very first time a leatherback seater or hatchling, a rare sight here on the island. With the strength of a loggerhead and fearlessness of a hawk's bill, Nikhil is determined to succeed. So tonight, representing the St. Kitts Sea Turtle Monitoring Network is the guy with all the turtle pride, Mr. Nikhil Sutton. Good night, everyone. My name is Nikhil Sutton again. I would like for you to stay tuned as we have a awesome discussion here at the studio. Okay, so this next panelist is actually a surprise panelist because you didn't know before, right? Um, Rashid, well, before I go into his bio, Rashid is actually, this is probably in his bio, but Rashid is currently studying marine biology at the University of the West Indies, and we asked him to be a guest, surprise guest panelist, so that we can get the perspective of a future marine biologist. So let me go into his bio now. A bird's unique chirp, the green, the rich green leaves, and the depths of the ocean are just some of nature's simple wonders that excite him. Rashid Stanley is a 23-year-old whose connection to and inspiration from nature has drawn him to be a creative and nature professional. He currently is the founder of Precision Media Group, a creative company focused on film and digital strategy. He is also pursuing a bachelor's degree in marine biology at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus. And he also achieved his open water paddy certification. Rashid spends his time expanding his skill set while being keen to the evolving world around him. As a podcast host, he uses his ability to bring people together to present creative views. Rashid doesn't say much, well, he will tonight, <laughs> but he certainly does a lot with being involved in athletics, CPL, tourism, filmmaking, banking, IT, and the community service. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Rashid and all of the other panelists. Uh, good night, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, we're going to have a little surprise. <laughs> <laughs> More surprises? <laughs> More surprises. Um, but most of all, some good takes and some good perspectives from wonderful people who will share some knowledge. So. Great. <laughs> All right, so let's, we'll have a break and then we'll get back to our presentations. Do spotted eagle rays have an affinity for the southeast peninsula coast of St. Kitts? We want to know. The mysterious Atobatus narinari is one of the most celebrated large marine mammals in St. Kitts. They can live up to 25 years and are identified under the IUCN status as near-threatened. Though spotted eagle rays are occasionally associated with squadrons, they are predominantly solitary and migrate and feed on their own. However, the big research question that needs to be answered is, do spotted eagle rays follow their hats to St. Kitts? Okay, and good night again, everyone. Um, so our first panelist, Ms. Tonicio Wyatt, she will be presenting on behalf of the St. Kitts, um, St. Kitts Reef Guardians, and she has some interesting takes on pollution in our environment from Ridge to Reef. Should I next slide? What is the Reef Guardians and how did that come about? 
The Reef Guardian is a group, an uh, NGO, of young persons my age to about teenagers, teenagers my age and above as well, young people, as the youth, young adults, at, as the youth department would say. We are engaged in marine conservation, youth empowerment, and education awareness. We, we do beach cleanups, we do collaborations, we do research along other teams, and we also try to do outreach to schools as well. Okay, so while we are, went, while we are waiting for the presentation to come up, um, that says SKN Reef Guardians. Yes, great, nice. <laughs> All right, so now Tanisa could go ahead. Marine pollution. Imagine if you were a marine animal and you had to swim through this. What would it be like for you? So what would it like be like for you, Rashid? It would be very chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> chaotic, yes. Nikhil? For me, I would be grumpy because everything in my way. Everything in your way. And I would be like, mm, where did this come from? I know. What is this? What is this? Exactly. Karim? Well, being someone who does not like a crowd. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say, as a boat captain, you could navigate to the waters. <laughs> well, it's, it's possible, you know, but quite tedious. I believe mm -hmm. that I would like to also enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, my swimming. I mean, if I was an animal, I, I want to be, you know, right. careful. When you look at the birds in the sky, exactly. there's nothing for them to hit, you know what I mean? Mm. So I don't think, as a fish, I would want to be hitting anything in the water. <laughs> and what fish would you be? That's a very interesting question. Look at you come back so to that? <laughs> no, it is, it is. What fish would you be, Rashid? <laughs> a shark. A shark? What type of shark? Great white. A great white. <laughs> okay, clearly not from the Caribbean region, but cool. <laughs> Nikhil? I don't think you should ask me what fish I would be. Because you'll clearly be a turtle. Of course. <laughs> Leatherbacks, yeah, hands really. down. Hands down, hands no down. No questions asked. Okay. Land-based land sources such as agriculture runoffs, discharge of nutrients and pesticides and untreated sewage, including plastics, account for approximately 80% of marine pollution globally. So, for this slide, I'm appealing to farmers. We, I would like for you to reduce the amount of chemicals being used Therefore, the runoff from the, chemi from the rainfall mm. gets into the water and this reduces the nutrients in the ocean. So I'm appealing to them for them to turn to more organic farming yes. and yeah. protected agriculture using shade houses. In that way, we help to protect the ocean and we can still farm for us. Yes, nice. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. One discarded plastic. Once discarded plastics are weathered into and eroded into very small fragments known as microplastics. These together with plastic pallets are already found in, in most beaches around the world. So here are some of us, <laughs> including Reef Guardians, <laughs> doing beach cleanups. There on the right hand side, we are sifting for the microplastics as stated before. And on the left hand side, we are doing beach cleanups. On the left hand side at the top, 
we are doing beach cleanup in the water where we collect the garbage or plastics well, from we the ocean. Well, just the water. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> come out the water, what we collected. Yeah. So we are looking at, at them and then we dispose of them into bigger garbage bags. Some might say, well, you're collecting garbage mm -hmm. to put in, you're collecting plastic to put in plastic, mm -hmm. but the reason for that, we are collecting more well put, when we put them into bigger bags mm -hmm. than just having them, the small little bags. The single-use yes. um, little ones, mm -hmm. yes. Entanglement. So now I guess we're going to go into what um, plastic, plastic pollution yes. and also like marine debris, what would be the effects of these in the water, in the ocean? Yes. So, for fishermen, as the... Fishers, remember we are gender neutral. <laughs> yes, general. And the term is now fish. fishers. Carmen, I expected you to jump in at that point. <laughs> fishers. I expected that to include we, herself. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Mm -hmm. We just want you guys to be careful when you're fishing, to always be mindful of your nets, you're not only the garbage or the plastics in the water, but the nets as well. As you can see, the turtle is captured in, in the nets. So if you don't be careful, this can happen. And we want all turtles to live, of course, and we want to see them in the beautiful waters. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Also, along the coast, along with the coral reefs and things, and other animals can get captured as well. So not only the turtles or the fish. So we just want you to be more careful on entanglement. Ingestion. So on this slide, um, Go back to the slide, sorry. I remember when um, we were talking about this particular slide and just looking at, well, that, that bird is an albatross, but if we just imagine a pelican, our national bird, doing this very same thing, t seeing, um, it looked like a Doritos bag, or whatever, I'm not calling the brand, but whatever um, snack bag, and seeing that in the water, it's moving around, it looks like a fish. They go down, they scoop it up, and then it's, it's pollution. How does that affect the marine life? And marine and life country. also includes birds. And yeah. the country yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. You could look at the, the number of different items that's on the decaying bird inside the stomach. If you look at the number of individual items that are in there, you could see that is not just plastic bags, it's not just bottles, but a whole lot of things yes. made that, that could affect these animals. Yeah, and, and, and what's also frightening is that it's more to what I would say meets the eye because you also have microplastics and macroplastics, mm -hmm. um, which either can be in the soil, mm -hmm. depending on if you're a terrestrial, um, organism, but for the focus of marine, it's more so in macro and micro, but more so if a bird eats a fish or if a shark eats a smaller fish mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so it would go up the food chain, so it doesn't yeah. just stop at the actual organism that initially yeah. consumes yeah. it. And the food mm -hmm. chain includes us. us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is, so, that is yeah. very so. much part of the the marine and coastal environment, humans are also included. Something that I thought was interesting, and well, well Karen was signaling me before, um, <laughs> but then the slide changed. The ghost fishing and oh, yes, ghost nets, nets that, um, hey, you go ahead. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Fishing for ghosts. <laughs> well, well, if, we, if we get there, I don't think I will be around for that. But um, we, in our legislation at DMA, it's, it's built on several principles. What does DMA mean? DMA, that is the Department of Marine Resources, for those who um, may not be up to speed with the acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot to say, so it's we just a lot. say DMA. 
um, our legislation is guided by certain principles and one of those principles is actually that waste occurring from fishing activities will be minimized. So incidents of ghost fishing at a lost fish trapper in that case and net you could see areas where it was cut and might have been broken and then it's just drifting. Because when a fisher goes out and you place something here, you're thinking that when you come back, I am going to meet it here or maybe just over there, depending on how the, the water would have interacted with it. But if it's damaged, as we mentioned about you know vessels and stuff like that passing, so if it's damaged, a piece of that could break off and go some um, all over. So we try and encourage fishers you know to check your gear and stuff like that regularly make repairs and things like that in order to avoid things like the ghost fishing uh it's really serious to see nikhil you know tangled in that <laughs> <laughs> you know? <We're> sorry. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> next panel discussion we won't have him here <laughs> <laughs> all right so we had entanglement Ingestion, what's next? Non native species. The Halophilia stipulacea. This is. You have to say that slow. <laughs> you have to break it down. Uh -huh. the, mm -hmm. For the children at home <laughs> and adults <laughs> as well. Halophilia stipulacea. Mm -hmm. So this is a seagrass. This is, sorry, not mm -hmm. seagrass. This mm -hmm. is not seagrass. A seagrass that is not from our waters. However, it's in, it is in our waters now, but it is not something that we are accustomed to or the turtles or the species on a whole are regular, are uh, something they know of. Mm -hmm. Something that they eat, something that's within their normal diet. So it's an invasive species, right? What are the possible pathways it could have taken to come here? So tide, tides, water waves, um, pollution as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. um, traveling because probably the a boat or something just mm -hmm. it flowed along the the line and mm -hmm. came to our waters. Yeah, probably hitched a ride on something, you know. Yeah, hitched a ride, yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, cause it's, it's possible yeah. as well, too, with, with fish species, yeah. um, animals. Uh, I've seen the fish swimming from wherever it came from. Let's say it's a fish mm -hmm. from North America. Well, didn't want to really the name any countries. Waters. But yeah, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, temperate waters. Mm -hmm. uh, a bottle that's partly open, drifting, could provide some sort of coverage for that species or and the it could habitat actually exactly. yeah because it could and be inside too. habitat mm -hmm. exactly so mm -hmm. it would allow it to acclimatize in a way where it, it moves from the cooler waters to the warmer waters but it's in a vacuum temporarily so there are a lot of trickle effects that could come from uh, plastic pollution and we are focusing on plastics other things are pollutants but plastics because we know they take very very long to break down. Yeah. So you could imagine the amount of plastic boats <laughs> 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 that invasive species would, would take yes. cruises on, you know? So and this particular species, sorry, this particular species, it actually reproduces asexually, which means that it doesn't need a male and a female to reproduce. It can just break off and there would be a new plant. Mm. And so this is very hard to remove from our natural um, system because then if you just pull it up you can literally be creating more, more right exponentially more um, species in the environment incidental so. propagation yes <laughs> <laughs> incidental propagation yes yes exactly habit habitat damage as this picture is showing you can see piece of plastic that can be the corals or habitats for marine species that could drift them along with the mm -hmm. tides. Well, they'll probably drag them. Yeah. Okay, that's very huge. Causing huge. damage mm -hmm. and therefore they probably will have to go and try to hide with somebody else <laughs> in somebody else's <laughs> habitat. 
I don't know. <laughs> let me peep over we here. We have bigger prayers. <laughs> bigger prayers. <laughs> maybe, maybe able to come and eat them. So. Okay, yes, so it would make them more susceptible to predators yes. getting them. Yes, that's, that's something I didn't even think about. Yeah, um, really. Right, you know, like the, exactly. Because they just lost their initial habitat, so now they have to. And it's transparent. And no, if you live in a glass house. <laughs> yeah. <if you> live in <laughs> <laughs> Those stones don't be able to be eaten from predators. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm also wondering if mm -hmm. it, it, could, it could also spread to. Um, more so natural conditions or more so um, preferred conditions for reefs and um, then the organisms that, that, that inhabit those regions. Because most so persons would focus on mechanical damage, mm -hmm. but you also mm -hmm. have the biological and yeah, the chemical. Yes. Because in the slide that we just saw, um, I would imagine that it blocks some of the light of that's course. required. Mm -hmm. And um, what's required? Mm -hmm. Maybe even oxygen as well, depending. What needs light, sunlight, to reach the ocean floor so it can thrive? Corals. Yes. Corals. <laughs> <laughs> Corals, exactly. And as you mentioned, exactly. um, biological damage as well. Plastic help to breed pathogens, um, yes. which, you know, essentially are diseases. You know what I mean? The root causes of a lot of diseases. So we could be transferring bacteria throughout the environment when we dump plastic in the ocean because yes. we really don't know. Wow. I mean, imagine something comes down the gut or something like that. We don't know what is on that exactly. and what could happen if that enters in the water. So we really need to... And we literally saw that happening during the plastic, the plastic tail, tail oh, wow. video. Yeah. So it really, you <laughs> see how um, those, those videos aren't just random, comes full circle. but it, it really comes full circle with mm -hmm. the conversation. All right, so our next presenter, panelist, um, would be Mr. Karim Sadler, just giving us the Department of Marine Resources perspective on plastic pollution, and it can also include marine debris and um, land-based sources of pollution. Mm -hmm. So it, yes, so I'm going to let Karim go now. All right. So. As I mentioned earlier, our legislation, which is the Fisheries, Aquaculture and Marine Resources Act, FAMRA for short, another acronym mm -hmm, out there, mm -hmm. um, is based on several principles. And some of those principles specifically related to um, protection of the environment and the minimization of waste. I mentioned one before, and it is that pollution originating from fishing activities should be minimized. So through the... the um, administering of our legislative duties that would be taken into consideration. Also the ecosystem's approach to management and development. And what that allows is for taking into consideration all aspects of the marine environment. So if something is going to affect the seagrass beds, if it's done on the reef, then we have to look at how we are going to do that. And that also includes um, how we go about the dealing with the the pollution issues um, and the other one that I have is that natural resources it identifies that natural resources living and non-living are our natural assets and the heritage of our um, citizens and so they must be developed and protected for the benefit of present and future generations so these are some of the things that would guide how the Department of Marine Resources um, carries out duties. And so what we've been doing is we've done a lot of partnerships with other organizations yes. and various projects. So as Tonisia would have mentioned, with the beach cleanups, traditionally people would just walk the sand and they would pick up stuff and things like mm -hmm. that. But what we've found is that a lot of stuff ends up in the water. A lot yeah. of stuff yeah. ends so, up. In the water, so like no, I just have to stress that. But you can go ahead. It's, go it's ahead. really, it's really. I actually have a towel Listen, that I yes. found in the water. A really yes. nice this beach is, towel. This is a real life thing. Yeah, somebody a probably towel. lost that from a boat, and I, I took it. It was good still, you know. Wash it and things like that. Yeah, I wasn't doing that. Because the camera's doing. I wasn't doing that. Yeah, but cool. But 
Yeah, carry um, them the front. Yeah. So now those cleanups, mm -hmm. we are now calling them coastal cleanups, mm -hmm. um, because we would have a team in the water and just on the edge of the seagrass beds. You would be surprised the number of cups, forks, all types of different stuff. Because if the wind blows it also from the beach, mm -hmm. the closest thing that it's going to hit is there. It's like trying mm -hmm. to hit the side of a house. You, you really <laughs> can't miss it. So a lot of stuff. You, you might actually find more things in the water when we wear them than out there. So we, a lot of sensitization as well, things like this. Um, we, oh, we wait. Let me do the shameless plug for the Clean Seas Project that has had all of us on, on, on the sand and in the water and jumping off boats to yep. clean the marine environment. Um, it's been instituted by the Ripple Institute and also the Caribbean Youth yeah, Environment yeah. Network. Mm -hmm. So just a little shameless plug um, because they have been doing a lot of work along with the Sustainable Destination Council Plastic Be Gone group as well. Another little shameless plug, because we have been really, I mean, as you can see, I don't know if everybody realized this, but everybody in this panel has been active persons. So this is not just expert panel from an, a purely academic point of view. It is really persons who dive in, <laughs> you know, I had to come with a little, <laughs> dive in to the marine environment and do work, right? Go ahead. Yeah. So... We've also assisted and participated as well, so as I mentioned, in sensitization campaigns, um, you know, getting individuals to, to understand what we are now discussing here. That is the decisions and our actions that we, you know, we just don't even think about how that can affect us down the road, how that can affect the, our children, our grandchildren, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Stuck. No. You stuck? Uh, okay. <laughs> I was going to. <laughs> yeah, that was not I a was glitch. Going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Karim doesn't know that this video will play next, but this video actually features him uh, doing Good awareness. Style. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a lots of surprises will come up and surprises for the panelists as well. Yeah. Um, um. We'll be showing. So the next video is really. It was a part of, I shouldn't, I shouldn't hint him, no, let's Why just, let's play, the what? <laughs> let's just play the video, let's just play the video, and let's just see, let's just see what's going on. As all people say, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach a man how to fish and you feed him for life. All my conditions and divisions, the narrows, need our help. In local terms, I'm talking about the channel between St. Kitts and Nevis. We need to protect this area to help save our future. So, I'm calling on you, St. Kitts and Nevis. This is who we are, talking to brother and sister. This is who we are, hand in hand we work together. This is who we are, protecting and will save our future. This, 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 this. Thanks to all the fishermen who go out and see. That's the way they make a living to feed you and me Fishing is very vital to our country Let us protect the reefs and build our economy This is who we are Talking to brother and sister This is who we are Hand in hand we work together This is who we are Protecting and will save our future This, 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 this Let me tell you about the narrows And how it can save our sorrows Let us come together We can protect this area Let the fishes breed and grow in pretty seagrass below To go then it will follow Go, 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 go This is who we are Talking to brother and sister This is who we are Hand in hand we work together This is who we are Protecting and will save our future This, 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 this This is King Sugar Boo And I want you to join me In protecting the narrows That's the channel between Sims and Nudis
All right, so we were literally wow. here dancing. Mm -hmm. Y'all missed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Um, but yes, that project, that was so incredible. We are, but actually, no. Let me let the panelists talk first, and then I could say something after. Karim? Okay. Okay. Karim, you had so, flashbacks? So just, so just so you guys know. <laughs> I have since changed my ways from being the bad guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, that I, I remember that that was it was a very exciting um, production, you know, getting that yeah. done. Uh, yeah. Sugar Bowl, I hope you're still not so afraid of boats. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. Um, no. Yeah, it, okay. it, it was it was really fun, you know, interacting and things like that. Um, when when Sugar Bowl came up with that song, I think. Man, that was, mm -hmm. it was really. It mm -hmm. to be paraded, actually. I, I love that, it. Yes. I think, I think that should be for road match next time. Oh, yeah, yeah. sir. Sure. Yeah. We should go for road match. <laughs> <laughs> that song as well. Listen, that song. But yes. the, this song really is literal because this is who we are. We have mm -hmm. 68 square miles of land and so much so ocean. Much. So we really need to, to focus on our we close We're a large line. marine state. Yeah. Not a small not Island. a small, exactly. No, we're a large marine <laughs> right, state. Right, like, like we're on a surfboard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's shaped like a chicken. I've heard, I've, heard heard that that and and huh? I've heard that the turtles mm -hmm. are on our waters are citizens as well. <laughs> of course. Oh, yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. They have, yes. they have yes. passport and things. Passports, yes. visas, everything. <laughs> <laughs> they I even have more permission than us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really vital for 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 our for our well being, for economic reasons, you know. As you said if they are no fishermen. Mm -hmm. oh. Fishers. Mm -hmm. Oh well I'm, I'm guilty <laughs> of the same thing. So <laughs> mm -hmm. if they are no fishers, if they are no fisher folk, you know, men and women are they're no consumers. You know what I mean? Obviously, they we, cannot be any consumers because mm -hmm. if nobody is providing it, then how will we get it? Exactly. And then if we are damaging the place where they would take the fish from, then mm -hmm. how are we going to get fish in the future? Yes. You know? And that was what I liked about that video is we were able to capture several things, that several issues that we wanted to show solutions for. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't just about um, pollution. It. It was also about um, lionfish, catching lionfish in the proper way, using the proper tools. Um, we were looking at enforcement. We were looking at the connection between St. Kitts and Nevis, only a sand throw away. Listen, when we were doing that part of the video, <laughs> that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, having like the children, we had to, well, we made Captain Compliance the target for um, the, so, the, the sand ball throw. Yeah. And so that was incredible for the children. They had way yeah. too much fun doing that. <laughs> we, we, we filmed that over and over, you know, just for the children um, because they had lots of fun. But we were also teaching them. And so that when he was talking to them, yeah. that was real. Like he was really talking mm -hmm. to them. That was a that little boy was really jumping up the that, whole time. That was not scripted. That was not scripted. Was not scripted. None of that was scripted. And it does came me. up. <laughs> I, think so. I, think, I think so. I think so. So that was not scripted, and that was that was one of the ways that if we truly collaborate and focus on partnerships, we can get our proper messaging and combine messaging. Mm -hmm. So that is in, that is important. All right. So we are going to hear from Mr. Wait, let me see. Fear, fearlessness of a hawk's bill, <laughs> and uh, what, what was what was the first one? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I really, I know it, but I want you to say it. Power for log ahead. So we are going to hear from the same kids. Sita on monitoring network. Next. Good night again to all viewing. Um, for those of you that are just joining us, my name is Nikhil Sutton, and I am the representative here tonight from the St. Kitts Sita to monitoring network. So here in St. Kitts. We're just, just before I get into the presentation, we're going to get a little bit of background information on sea turtles, and then we're going to jump into how pollution, marine pollution affects um, sea turtles and the environment around us. So here in St. Well, across the world, there are seven species of sea turtles, and so we have the leatherback, the loggerhead, 
the Hawksbill, the Green, the Olive and Kempridley, as well as the Australian Flatback. Now here in St. Kitts, we have three nesting species. Um, we have the Leatherback, which would be the big black one at the center. <laughs> and then we have the green that is just sitting above the leatherback and then just above the green we have the hawksbill now what important have heads we have loggerheads here but they don't nest here in St. Kitts and Nevis mm. we've seen two loggerheads recently mm -hmm. and so we had Sassy and Kaden no, that came in from we had Sassy and Kaden mm -hmm. and so we'll learn more about <laughs> Sassy and Kaden later on mm -hmm. but for now we're going to jump into the importance of sea turtles here um, within our waters. So sea turtles are keystone species. Now keystone species referring to the, uh, the maintainers mm -hmm. of balance. Mm -hmm. So you see at the bottom we have maintaining balance mm -hmm. of the ocean floor. Mm -hmm. Sea turtles maintain that balance. So for instance, leatherbacks, they feed on jellyfish and so they control the jellyfish population and if that jellyfish population is not mm -hmm. controlled then we're going to have jellyfish eating our fish larvae mm -hmm. which means we then won't have fish mm. um, across the world here in St. Kitts and Nevis so I can go and hungry. So it's imp yeah you might go hungry <laughs> yes. so, all, so all the persons out there <laughs> that don't eat chicken mm -hmm. and don't want to be a rabbit <laughs> but want some fish it's mm -hmm. important that um, sea turtles maintain um, the ocean floors mm -hmm. and so again we also have the greens which maintain the seagrass beds mm -hmm. so greens are the farmers mm -hmm. they are the farmers of the oceans <laughs> the, the, fam <laughs> the farmers the lawnmowers whatever you want to call it they maintain the seagrass beds let's ask um, Rashid a trick question yes. Yes. <laughs> everybody's excited for this trick question yeah. Rashid, we are going to ask you. Go ahead, Tanisha. Go ahead, ask it. <laughs> what color is a green sea turtle? Is a, is a what? Green sea turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you? I don't, I don't feel like the answer is green. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. What okay, color is it? That's, that's better. <laughs> don't know what you I, got. I, I <laughs> Beige browns with hints of green. He is actually not wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. Greens are not green for those persons out there think, who yeah. think that, that green turtles, turtles are green. green. We always catch children when we yes. ask this question. That is why we were here laughing because we always catch children and they say random colors and it's very Tell hilarious. Me about agriculture. So when we had asked oh a set of students what color is a green sea turtle, oh no, it's like green dog. <laughs> This was an it's, agriculture it's open. It was lizard. It was <laughs> and then when the children find out that they were wrong, they were just like, oh, you know, what? why like, No, why? Okay. That makes no yeah. sense. Then why? <laughs> then why is a green sea turtle called a green sea turtle? And Tell then, us why. And then you had to explain that mm -hmm. green sea turtles, uh, well, they, got, they get the name because they eat the seagrass, which um, makes the pigmentation in their fat green. So green and sea turtles And that pigment get is called? Chlorophyll. Yes. And so sea the green sea turtles get their so name from the food that they eat. Is what you're saying? <laughs> well, yes, because green sea turtles are herbivores. So they eat the seagrass and they get that chlorophyll that makes their fat green. So the fat of the green sea turtle is where the green sea turtle gets mm. its name from. Mm -hmm. To change that name. <laughs> And so continuing on, we're going to jump into our next slide, um, which, by the way, thank you for the cool graphics to You're welcome. the creator. Mm -hmm. So temperature of the sand determines the gender of our hatchlings. And so we have hot chicks and cool, cool dudes. So hot chicks and cool dudes, basically, this is our way of teaching our junior conservationists um, how the sand helps to determine the, temp the gender of hatchings. So hot chicks would be when we have warmer temperatures, 
So those would be the eggs on the outer layers would be hot chicks and then on the inside would be cool dudes because the eggs on the outside tend to gravitate the heat that's off the sand and then the eggs on the inside are cooler, tem cooler tempered eggs. Now, because we're in the <coughs> leatherback nesting season, we're going to jump into some leatherback facts. And so leatherbacks can grow anywhere between six and nine feet, which could be some of us. As tall as I am? Mm, you're not six feet. <laughs> <laughs> And sure. so, in my mind, she is tonight. In my mind. In with, heels. with she your is. heels, yes. Yeah. In my heels, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, leatherbacks can grow anywhere between six and nine feet and can weigh anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 pounds. They are the largest sea turtle species in the world, the only soft cell species, and the only species that lay yolkless legs at the, at the top of their nest. Oh, wow. Mm. And so their eggs, their eggs are specifically the size of a ping pong ball. Mm -hmm. And then at the top, there are smaller tennis. ones. So in case predators get into the nest, mm -hmm. then the that's the first thing that they get to. Yes. And I guess it's somewhat of a defense mechanism because mm -hmm. the world hatch rate for leatherback nests is 50%. But here on St. Kitts, it's somewhere around 7 and 8%. Wow. So they're just out there trying to protect them. I really thought you were going to say like 70. I know. We wish it would have uh, been 70. I was and really we're hoping that it gets there someday. But yeah. for now, it's unfortunately at 7 to 8%. Wow. Hmm. Next slide, please. So leatherbacks eat jellyfish. And jellyfish more look like plastic in the, in the water. And so we don't think that leatherbacks could tell the difference between a plastic and a jellyfish. Mm -hmm. So one of the key things that's, in, that's important to um, notice when we're going out is that Yes, so in this picture, um, we could somewhat tell the difference between the plastic and the jellyfish, but the leatherbacks can't. And so they consume the plastic thinking that it's a jellyfish, mm -hmm. and then it ends up in their stomachs, they suffocate, and then they die, which leads to a decrease in population, which we don't want. And so we are urging persons um, across the world and here in St. Kitts and Nevis to be mindful of what you do with your plastic bags and when you're out this summer to take your trash home with you and effectively dispose of your garbage. Now our greens, it. which we talked about earlier, right there at the bottom you see how did the green sea turtle get its nourishing? You see, <laughs> they're eating the seagrass and the algae and so it's important that um, greens fester the seagrass beds. So they maintain um, the seagrass beds to keep them alive and to um, serve as a nursery for fish, mm -hmm. which um, I think Lady Marine Biologist could <laughs> expound on. Um, so the nurs nursery, literally, what is what it sounds like. It um, is an area where you have the juvenile species, and this does not mean just juvenile species for fish or lobsters, but it also includes conch, it includes shrimp, it includes crabs, it includes Anything. octopus, like it includes um, <coughs> a wide variety of, of marine species, species mm -hmm. that in their juvenile state, that's where they usually occur in um, nursery areas like seagrass beds. And where is the largest seagrass bed located in St. Kitts and Nevis? I'm not allowed to respond to any of these questions. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah. Karim, do not respond. <laughs> <laughs> any knows? Yes. Good right. job. Okay, great. I was what just going to take away your now? Reef Guardian um, <laughs> certificate. certificate. Yes. Is <laughs> a good thing I'm not certified as well. Good. Yeah. Don't worry, that's coming. Yeah, brother. 
But yes. But I'm wondering, are there are the green turtles known to eat the invasive species that we are currently having? Wow. You're going to answer? Is that a good question? Okay. So, um, recently, at the Senkisita Monitoring, at the Senkisita Monitoring, um, where they have the tanks, there was um, some of the in-water team, they actually brought the invasive grass for the turtles to eat. And, uh, and the turtles actually, actually consumed them. It was at a slower rate than the normal seagrass, than the native seagrass, of course, is what we expect. But they did actually consume the invasive seagrass. Now, there is some studies being done at the University of the Virgin Islands, go Bucks. Um, we are there, they're looking at whether or not the native, the invasive seagrass, which is the Halophila stipulacea, yeah. if it has similar nutrient um, content. content as the native grass, to know whether or not, even if our species are eating the invasive, if it can benefit their diet. So that is a good question. Yes, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. And you gave me that little plug for my university. <laughs> so that was, that was great. And so that was a great observation from Mrs. King. Um, so again, yes. So we do have green sea turtles out there that are foraging, um, that are getting bigger. Mm -hmm. And they're moving along the lines of eating what's there, per se, mm -hmm. but not strictly getting away from their diet. Uh, Females tend to um, have snacks like we do mm -hmm. and would often feed on jellyfish for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess just like how we like potato chips, <laughs> they like jellyfish mm -hmm. for snacks. Mm -hmm. so. Jelly chips. Jelly <laughs> chips. <laughs> <laughs> yes, jelly yes. chips. And so, um, again, it's important that um, we monitor the activities of these nesting um, sea turtle beds and these nesting um, the foraging areas, foraging areas. Mm -hmm. because again if we refer to the image on the slide this was one of our patients whom we dubbed Carambola because we found it at Carambola yes. and Carambola came in with a hook and some entanglement and ingestion per se and Carambola ingested about 18 feet and one inch of fishing line and so that was just the ingestion and then there was the also the fishing line on the outside so again we're asking for um we're asking our fishermen fisherwomen fishers <laughs> to be careful mm -hmm. um of what they do with their scrap fishing line and we're asking that you look for our monofilament bins which are designated across beaches mm -hmm. in St. Kitts and Nevis and you can dump your scrap um, fishing line or fishing nets in those monofilament bins and we'll take them to be recycled. Okay. And so this summer again we are asking that you be mindful of what you do. Um, we're going to start a challenge next week and so we're moving forward with starting the straw challenge. Mm -hmm. And so the straw challenge mm -hmm. we're going to challenge the persons of St. Kitts and Davis to see who can collect the most straws. Because just recently, mm -hmm. we went to present at the aquatics camp, mm -hmm. and we had the opportunity to present this idea to the students. And within five minutes alone, only within 100 feet of the beach, mm -hmm. they collected 158 straws. I and it was just pose. nine of them. I was like, Free wow. Bear, right? Yes, on the Free <laughs> Bear Strip. So um, just imagine if we had more time to do the whole strip, how much straws we would have collected. So it's important that we dispose of our garbage properly because we don't know how long it's going to last in the environment and what negative effects it's going to have. Right. Thank you so much. Um, there's a question that was posted online. Are there any laws against owning a acetyl? Karim? Yeah, so that, that is prohibited, not only here in saying it, but acetyls have been listed um, as endangered some critically, uh, others. But unless it's for scientific um, reasons, a person should like not. Like by actual scientists, not yeah, just yeah, like by make actual believe scien yes, yes, scientists. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, you would need mm -hmm. to seek permission um, wherever you are. 
um, from the, the relevant authorities. Here in St. Kitts and Nevis, of course, it would be the Department of Marine Resources. So unless you have that express written consent where you would outline why you would have this turtle uh, um, in your possession or whatever, you, you are not to keep a turtle captively. It is also um, an offence, a chargeable offence, to tamper with nests mm -hmm. on the beach or to have hatchlings as well in your possession. Mm -hmm. um, if, if for some reason you, you do find hatchlings, we responded to a call once where a lady found some hatchlings, they were heading in the wrong direction, you know. And so pollution is not just plastic, light pollution. Light pollution. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something with, with turtles. We, uh, they, they try and follow the moon. So if you have bright, you know, white oh, the lights, the strongest, light. the strongest yeah. light. Yeah. 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 So the, the hatchlings, they came out and they were heading in the wrong direction. So a lady took them, you know, if, if you're being a good, a good citizen, <laughs> citizen. you know, mm -hmm. uh, being responsible, then that's fine. But, um, but she did contact us as well because um, you never know what could happen. And it's actually a, a very good scientific opportunity to be able to observe these, check their health and stuff like that. Yes. But so in we terms did recall in the St. Kitts City Monitoring Network and had their team yes, do um, the blood workup and stuff. Mm -hmm. So but we were able to get that data. Marine turtles, completely a no-no for keeping in captive. Yes. <laughs> Please. Yes, and just yes. feeling off of what mm -hmm. Karim said, um, we know that there are persons out there that have good intentions and that want to help, but again, some of the times, because of their inexperience in certain capacities, um, their good deeds might be a negative yeah, um, so impact me. on that species. Um, we've had persons that took up nest, um, well, emerging hatchlings, and they went out and put them in a bucket and put them in the water. I think it's going to move away from the impact that the turtles have, well, to get back to where they came from. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. initially turtles have um, what we call magnetism. Mm -hmm. And so the nesting females would return to the beaches that they were born from. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that might impact um, how they function. How they function. Yes. And so for those persons who might encounter um, sea turtles or hatchlings this summer, you could give us a call at our hotline. It's 869-764-6664. It's 24-7. Someone will definitely answer you. You could also send us a message on Facebook if you have any questions. Or email us at skturtles at gmail.com and someone will gladly answer you and be of assistance. So the Facebook handle is? The St. Kitts Sea Turtle Monitoring Network. And you could... Email us again at skturtles at gmail.com. And for those of you who missed the hotline number because maybe I talked too fast, which I, I was just to about do to tell you, slow it down six, so they could add it to their phone. 764 mm -hmm. 6664, add it to your phones in case of emergencies. And you don't get the hotline, then you'll reach out to the Department of Marine Resources. Yes. So for those, those who are wondering, um, if, if keys had different lighting to the rest of the island, now they know. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So interesting to know. Keys mm -hmm. has amber color lighting mm -hmm. because what is amber color lighting? It's like a shade of brown. <laughs> it's the same color as the yellow light on the <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <light>. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So basically, we uh, partnered with Skellic a couple years back. And they decided to change the lights along the main road for Keys because Keys is one of our nest, main nesting beaches here on St. Kitts for Leatherbacks. Leatherbacks. And so they took the initiative to um, help in conservation efforts and, and they changed yes. the yes. lights. Yes. Yes. And so give yes. props that. to Skelet yes. for yes. that. Yes, yes. So Partnerships. SDG, I'm wearing my SDG pin. So sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. and. SDG 17 is partnerships, and this is where partnerships is very important. important yes. Very mm -hmm. important. Okay, That's so nice. we're going to have another break, and then when we come back, we'll hear from our student talking about the future of marine biology. <laughs> it's like it's an The future is blue. <laughs> the, the future, future is, is blue. You. And wow. the future is you. Oh my God. Oh, yes, Gary. <laughs> 
<laughs> y'all live it. Y'all live it. That's for free. Yeah. That's for free. <laughs> that is for free. Mm -hmm. And with that, we'll be back. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Good day. My name is Vincia Collins from Vincia's Artistry. Today, I will be making a pair of earrings from plastic. So let's just get right into it. This is the pattern. It actually was cut from Clorox bottle. And this is the final completion of the plastic earrings. This is the finished look of the earrings and the bangle. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. The month of July is plastic free. So I am encouraging you to reduce the use of single use plastic. All right, so um, we are going to talk to Rashid and find out why marine biology? Where did this come from? What happened? What inspired you? Did you see a mermaid in the water? Was it Tracy? <laughs> Was it Tracy? <laughs> yes, so actually one day, um, I was about 10 years old, and I went out into the water and I saw Tracy the mermaid. And <laughs> that mm -hmm. it's marine biology or nothing. So that's what I'm I really about. believe that story. I believe that other persons have had this experience as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, I believe it as well. Yeah. Um, you know, recently we did, um, the Department of Youth, Nevis, had an internship, like meet your mentors in different um, sectors. And so they invited me to come because there was a young man who wanted to do marine biology. And when, when I met him, he was like, oh, you remember me? I just did the Reef Guardian course. And I was like, oh, yes, I do. Like when I came in, I was like, oh, yes, that's where I remember you from. And he said, so I was asking him about, you know, well, how did you get into marine biology? And he said, when he was younger, he, um, he was interested in marine biology, but then it sort of kind of just went away. And I was like, aha, because there was nobody around who you were <laughs> connecting with. It's, it's, it's yeah. easy for things that you want to be, that are like, it feels like a concept, so you can't really connect with it. And so when he, came to the Reef Guardian training, he said that he was complaining. Well, one of the, the, um, one of the co coordinators said that he was complaining about why do we have to come for two weeks and what are we going to do for two weeks? And uh, when he came after the first day, he was like, oh, I'm coming back every day. <laughs> and he was very excited. <laughs> and then that sort of just reignited that, passion. That, that passion for marine biology. And that is why the things that we do, each of us here on this panel, the things we do collectively, the things we do individually, really makes a difference because then persons get attracted to these very different um, career choices yeah. because they're seeing somebody, it, it feels real now. And the lifestyle right? is glamorous. And the lifestyle is <laughs> <laughs> very glamorous. <laughs> I know because we look like we're having fun every single time. Yes. Yeah. I, I have friends who are like, oh, know. you know, People you just go yeah. to work and swim in the, yeah. in the ocean and just play around and have fun. And, and sometimes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I mean, of course, we're not going to talk about the different shades that you can become from being in the in water, the yes. in the sun. Extended just baking, just people, extended periods of time. People hanging on the pole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or, you know, you happen to be drifting. One of, one of the first reef guardians, we actually nicknamed her jellyfish. Because she literally just used to be floating in the current. And we always had to be like, come back with the group. Right? So, <laughs> you know, we're not losing anybody. Um, so it's, it's fun experiences. But again, they learn a lot. Yes. They learn a lot. And so, and then they get inspired, and that helps us, and that motivates us working in this industry, right? I'm, I'm talking for Karen, but he's shaking his head, so I know <laughs> that I'm not really talking for him. We're saying the same thing. It's true. It's it motivates true. us, true. and it, it really helps, because then sometimes, you know, it can feel tedious. 
But when you have somebody who says, oh, I want to be a marine biologist, oh, I want to be a boat captain, because I, just, yeah, it, it's, just alone. That, that yeah. It's additional motivation. You, yes. know? Like you like the, what you're doing, but mm -hmm. then when you see that someone else wants to, to do, do it, it, and it, gives, it gives you hope for the future that even if I, I am not able to you know, realize certain things, at least there is someone else, there is someone else <laughs> that's coming who will pick up the battle, you know, and, yes. and just carry it out. And so swim with it. <laughs> just keep swimming. Yes. Just, keep, just swimming. keep swimming. And again, that shows the impacts of what we do. Mm -hmm. we, we all have um, different things that we, we major in and that we mm -hmm. focus on. And we often tend to get that spark every now and again mm -hmm. and remember why we do these things yes and what got us there in the first place mm -hmm. and so just reliving those moments i just um it's just pushing us to get better at what we do better. and to develop ourselves more and so we could actually pass on the information, mm -hmm. and to build younger per younger versions of ourselves. Oh. <laughs> I, I have a question mm -hmm. for our future marine biologist here. If you were to pick one particular focus, right, where you would spend your time, spend your efforts on in terms of Whatever, you like we examples. would want to promote from mm -hmm. the marine mm -hmm. environment. Yeah, I don't know him. <laughs> thing. Mm -hmm. What would you choose? It's a good question. I actually haven't thought about it much per se, um, because in our studies and in more so community and um, mm -hmm. group involvement, we touch on a lot of different areas. Um, so plastics and how it affects the marine environment and us eventually to coastal studies, beach profiles. Mm -hmm. We have mangroves, which we have um, mm -hmm. some beautiful mangrove swamps here at St. Kitts. Nevis. And Nevis as well. And Nevis. Yes, Nevis, Nevis has beautiful ones. Yes. Where, 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 where real Nevis? beautiful ones are. Where in Nevis? Oh, well. We're going to continue, but, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a fun of news to me, though. Mm -hmm. but, what? Um, yeah, it is. So we need to join the reef guard. You need to join the reef guard. Yes. And <laughs> so, yeah. Theme Award. So, I was just like, I'm not even answering because I'm going to put you in contact with Theme Award and she's going to give you a full tour. And history. And mm -hmm. history. <laughs> and, and she's going to uh, make you. She actually leads on our mangrove presentation for yes. the reef guardians. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm like, I'm not answering because I want you to be able to experience it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Should we give it a fr down first hand? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, um, but as you can see, there's a, a whole heap of areas mm -hmm. um, involved, and it just it just speaks to the extensive nature of our marine environment. Um, fun fact, for, for those of you who might not know, the Earth is actually 70% water. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and that's why we made the whole hitch about our sea turtles being our citizens, and they actually are. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, in my answer, I feel like um, the area that I would touch on is just general awareness, because mm -hmm. I find myself being attached to all of the scientific um, pillars of marine environment. Mm -hmm. And it, it just is something that I want to share with everybody and have that community and public and private collaboration, which, as Tracy said, is um, Mm -hmm. Sustainable Development Goals, which is mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also a passion of mine also through creative media and production. Of course. To just let persons know what the message is and to find creative ways to bring it about. Mm -hmm. So that is what my answer would be. Nice. And I like that mm -hmm. because that's my favorite part about being a Reef Guardian, being able to that's encourage true. and explain, especially having friendly conversations. Like, you had a... Um, an evening I went to the beach and I was with a friend and I was like, oh, suddenly I was like, you know, call turtles in the nesting and it's nesting season, just like, <laughs> hot, hot chicks and cool dudes. And the first one was like, what? Mm -hmm. And then I tell them how we got it. I was like, for two men, you know, that, that yes. would be my favorite part, yes. getting them to understand. Yes. And Easy to yes. get and lost in it. Yeah. Yes. But Interesting. Yeah, it, it really is difficult. I'm, uh, everything about the marine space is very exciting. So it I is. know it would be very difficult to it's pick. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to pick a particular area to focus on, you know, but I think that 
if you're going to be doing information sharing, you know, connecting people mm -hmm. with the ocean, with those spaces, then you wouldn't really have to choose. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so one of, well, the last video that we saw um, where Ms. Vincio was using Chrome plastic, plastic, plastic mm -hmm. to make earrings. earrings. Mm -hmm. And bangles. That's a good way to recycle. Very use. good way to reuse, um, to upcycle. That's the term I was looking for. I was like, it wasn't an hour. Um, but it, it's also a way to connect persons. It's a conversation starter. Mm -hmm. If you wear some earrings and somebody, oh, I like those earrings, and you, you know that it's, they're made from plastic, and this is how we reduce marine mm -hmm. pollution, and it really just starts this and whole it, conversation. It, it gives your accessories a story. Oh, yeah. because yes. Because when you can say, I got this earring from this beach or from this area, and this is how I am demonstrating that I am doing my part yes. to, to help yes. to remove and you know what I mean it's it's a good way to look at, at waste it's mm -hmm. a good way to look yes. at pollution at reducing wow. waste <laughs> yes yeah, like, um, there's another question on social media and I'm going to be fielding more questions now as, as we see them come up um, there's talk about a ban on plastic how far along is that? And we have our friend from the Department of Environment um, who would be showing up on a video now and then we'll have some more discussion about that. Becoming plastic free will definitely be a journey and I say journey because we have become so dependent on plastics, particularly single-use plastics like disposable utensils and food containers. And as an environmentalist by profession, I see the need for becoming plastic free. Although plastics are easily accessible and cheap, they have become one of the most harmful materials in the environment. So for me, becoming plastic free is a journey towards a healthier environment. Okay, so this year um, we were in, well, we're, we're always in com um, conversation because this year also serves on our Plastic yes. Begone Committee in the Sinki Sustainable Destination Council. And what the Department of Environment has been doing before they reach the point of creating the bill and naming the bill, they are doing consultations. And so this year has been instrumental in doing consultations with different community groups. Um, including public and private sectors, so that they're able to really be able to give that feedback. So the policies and the legislation does not just come from persons in a room somewhere, or some, some concept, some abstract thing, but it comes from the persons on the ground who are interacting every day with the environment, with the marine environment, with, um, with other persons and able to give that feedback and so that they help to shape the policy and direction that we are going in. All right, so there's another question. <laughs> when is turtle camp <laughs> and what age? Um, what age are children accepted? So usually turtle camp is held in the last two weeks of July. But this year, it's the last week in July. And we're more focusing on our junior conservationists that have been to see turtle camp before. Mm -hmm. So those um, campers that are ages 12 through 16. And so we're taking them now to a point that they become hands-on mm -hmm. um, in terms of getting field experience. Great. And so this year we're focusing on that age group, mm -hmm. but next year we'll be back to both age groups where we could accommodate our junior conservationists and get them into um, the information about sea turtles and how they could help. But again, this year we're focusing on our seniors 
getting them more hands-on experience, getting them field ready, mm -hmm. and so we could always call on them. So they will really be little Nikhil's because <laughs> yes. this is literally the track um, Nikhil was <laughs> on. I, I was on that track for a long time. <laughs> great. And I can tell you that it, it's a great experience. So, again. Okay, so there are two questions. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're getting the opportunity to again say the little hotline because one of the questions is, who do we report to if we see something? And then the other one is, if there's a turtle found dead, should we still call the, the turtle hotline? Okay, so for the, que the last question, if there's a dead turtle, mm -hmm. um, again, yes, call the hotline. We could collect data, we could find out if this is one of our um, nesting females, mm -hmm. uh, one of our juveniles that we catch because we tag sea turtles year round. We have our in water team that goes out on Sundays and they do tagging. So if you're out swimming and you see turtles gliding across the bottom of the, the sea floor with silver tags in their flippers, then it's us there at the St. Kitts to to monitor the network. So we could also monitor that dead turtle to see if it was one of our juveniles when last we caught it, and we could collect information and find out what um, was the reason behind this death. So again, you call us at 764-6664, and someone will respond to <laughs> your questions and our concerns. Okay, so the next question now, and I'm going to start from Karim. Um, do you have a favorite turtle? Because we know what Nikhil's answer is. Well, my favorite turtle uh, is the, the leatherback. Um, oh my leatherback. God. No, as a diver. Team leatherback? As a mm -hmm. diver. Mm -hmm. And leatherbacks being the deepest diving turtles, I, I would really like to be able to see what they see. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Wow, so, I, I yeah. like that answer. Oh, I'm gosh, with the leatherbacks. <laughs> Rashid. Rashid? Well, um, I like vegan food. <laughs> so, uh, I, I initially was going to say green turtle, but no. after mm. hearing um, Karim's dive story, I think I'm stuck between the two. So. Oh my jelly God. chips. No, <laughs> jelly chips. Just the jelly chips. chips. It's the jelly chips. Um, Tunisia? It would be the green turtle for me. Mm -hmm. Confusing people. <laughs> Oh, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Confusing <But> I, people. <laughs> so I really thought, listen to me, I really thought Tonicio was a part of that first cohort when they learned Cody, Cody, Sasha Edwards, she taught them about turtles in the morning. The afternoon when they did their practical, we went to um, Frigate Bay and they saw a green sea turtle in the ocean and I thought that would have been the reason. And, I, and then she said, I'm confusing people, so confusing. she's clearly confusing me. <laughs> so, so your answer mission, was accurate. Mission, mission accomplished. accomplished. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> um, I don't think I have a. Fr okay, so uh, there's okay. no mermaid, so yes. Um, <laughs> so the hawk's bill, why it's so interesting, is because the shell, the carapace. Carapace. Right. Um, they're usually why they why they're um, endangered and they're illegally caught is because the shell is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so persons use their shell to make jewelry and mm -hmm. different craft mm -hmm. items. Ornaments. And so I've always, I, I always want to like, as a painter, to recreate how that shell looks for my jewelry. So that's one of the things that, that I have been toying with. And so that is why, that is why Hawksbill was on the top of the list. The but before the that, it was Leatherbacks. Because I have, some, <laughs> I have some very interesting pictures oh God, with leatherbacks yes. dancing, so, dancing, on the dancing on the Go sand. LBs. Yes, so <laughs> I, I am also team leatherbacks, but the hawks, but is a very mm, interesting my one. My first ever painting actually was a leatherback. Oh yes, it was. Yeah, it was. It was a leatherback. Yes, we were at Turtle Camp. Uh, we crashed yeah. Turtle Camp, <laughs> and, <laughs> and yes, his first. We were supposed to be painting greens, but Karim yeah, did course. leather back. I, I, so leather that back. was really mm -hmm. interesting as well. Follow where they had. Yes, follow your heart. You mentioned, yes. you mentioned dancing with sea, with turtles. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if Nikhil can... Oh, okay. <laughs> so d Tracy dances with turtles. Now, I first saw this, I got up that morning, and I was scrolling through Facebook, 
And there comes Tricia <laughs> with a leather back in the background. And oh, I was doing like a, like a scorpion. Yeah. So my foot was like up. Like flip really back one yeah. way. And, mm. and, and your pose off. And you know, yeah, when like, you, you know, you meet somebody from far and I be like, yeah. Fran. She was literally yeah. like with, down with the leather yes. back. Like, yes. Oh, yes. And I was doing like jazz hands <laughs> with the leather back. She was like, oh, literally the dancing. Leather it was a very. And it, it was such, that was such an incredible experience. Um, and it was memorable because. Hmm, so when I was actually walking away from the leather back, I was thinking, oh my God, I have to go call my grandmother. But my grandmother passed, right? So it was one of those moments that we would have shared that moment. And so it was, it was memorable. Okay, and now you, I have to. Because it, that was a unique day because I think that leather back came up during the early morning. And so it was high day mm -hmm. and they don't usually come up at high day. And so it was an awesome time to get pictures, mm -hmm. to see what's happening and what the process looks like. Mm -hmm. But yet again, mm -hmm. unique because it was at that point in the day mm -hmm. where everybody was just getting mm -hmm. to what they have to do. Mm -hmm. And then you just be like, um, there's a leather back on keys, and then you're going halfway down the beach. <laughs> or there's a leather back on not for yours, and you're mm. going halfway down the beach. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, mm -hmm. that should have been me. But then you're going to be like, uh, jealous of Tracy because you're in the picture. That was me for like two and a half weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but being jealous no more because last week. No, you got, you got your leather back moment. Last week I got yes. my leather back moment. I was excavating a nest on not for yours. Sorry, on major, sorry. Mm -hmm. And that was our second nest on major since 1999. And started digging, no luck. Went to another location. And then there pops up a little back actually. And mm. the screams that came out, I thought, <laughs> Dr. I swear to God, Dr. Stewart thought I was going crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was just an exciting mm. moment. Again, real and unique experiences. Right. Go team leather back. I'll go that, team leather back. I'll be that extra when I see my first I could imagine. Well. <laughs> I could. I really could imagine. I'll be dancing actually. Um, mm. If there were any final statements that you would like to share with our listening and viewing audience, what would that be? Uh, well, for me, it, it would be do your part. Um, the, the discussion here, you know, the, it, it was really about. Um, you know, engaging everyone out there that's viewing and listening us as to what we would be losing if we don't take those correct steps um, to, to reduce uh, pollution, if we don't take those correct steps, as I mentioned, to protect the environment where all of these awesome things, you know, live and, and take place. Um, it's nice to look at, it's nice to enjoy when you go to the beach, you know, as, as it was in mm -hmm. the pollution, mm -hmm. imagine what it would be like if you were a fish. But you don't even need to be a fish. Imagine what it would be like if you, you. Mm -hmm. go to the beach and it's just a whole lot of plastic bottles, plastic bags rubbing on your feet mm -hmm. and things like that. So um, I just want to encourage everybody to you know, just do one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and Nikki mentioned the, the straw, the straw challenge. I really thought it would have been challenging persons to um, refuse straws mm -hmm. when you go to but, but we plastic did straws. We did, in we did that already. I know, so I really thought already, it was yeah. going to be that again. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to, you know, throw it out there if persons are willing to take the, the plastic challenge, you know, and cut back on your use of single use plastics. Yes. Ashid? Mm. Yes. Um, so I share the same sentiments that everyone here tonight has brought forth. Um, just want to continue to encourage everybody to be sustainable and conscious of um, not just your plastic use but your general environment use mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but just to close I don't think we touched on the composition of the plastics that would make up the plastic pollution so just a little um, plug we have 35% synthetic textiles 28% tires 24% city dust, 7% sea structures, which would be signs or buoys or um, 
lines, 3.7% mm -hmm. marine coatings, paintings, sorry, paints, 2% mm -hmm. personal care products, so like maybe like a roll-on bottle or um, mm -hmm. baby oil or something, and you have 0.3% plastic granules. So that just giving an idea as to, it's not just the plastic bags and stars, even though it's the majority of what we would consume and, and put mm -hmm. into the environment, but yes. um, it also speak, we also spoke to um, fishers, as you mm -hmm. said, the new term is fishers, mm -hmm. um, and how we all, terrestrial and marine, can play a part in, yeah. in what we're doing here, so. Nikhil? For me, um, my closing words would, again, reiterate what everyone else has said, it's not how we do things, it's how we go about solving the issues that we've created. And so again, um, I'm encouraging everybody to take the challenge, um, to play that important um, part in reducing, reducing um, the single-use plastics, um, whether it may be here in St. Kitts, or those listening across the diaspora, or across the world. Hi, Nevis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all those in Davis mm -hmm. to take the challenge to help to reduce that single-use plastic. Um, one piece of plastic makes a difference, and so if it's just one piece of plastic per day, one piece of trash per day, mm -hmm. it all helps at the end of the day. And we're all trying to help to preserve our environment and the animals around us so we can see them and future generations can enjoy these experiences as well. Great. Tanisha? My take could be for those going out to enjoy the hot girl summer, <laughs> to be mindful of the single-use plastics, and become a part of the solution to help in plastic pollution. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> good, nice. Good I was going to tie it in, but great. <laughs> that was so great. Thank you for doing that. Um, I would just like to thank all of the panelists for your engaging discussion. I would like to thank the staff at ZIZ for um, being awesome support. I would like to thank Mr. Kenny Manning, who represented the Sustainable Destination Council tonight. Um, also the Ministry of Tourism, P.S. Carleen Henry Morton. The Sustainable Destination Council, all of the members, all of the entities that make up the Sustainable Destination Council. The Panel Discussion Committee, um, thank you so much to Shana and Therese and Catrice. Y'all were amazing. Um, we really, we did a great job. I just, I really just want to thank y'all. I also have to thank the deco persons, the help persons that helped with our lovely um, table. So Delcia Brooks and also Melissa Allen from the Nevis Fisheries Complex. They did, they did such an amazing job and the staff of the Ministry of Tourism as well. So thank you all and have a good night. Be part of the solution, help to end plastic pollution. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we really got these. Say, I know about the cadavers. I own too many plants and animals. And if we don't keep it clean, we're gonna lose out. Cause I didn't provide the food and material. Me say, yeah, we fit take care of Mother Earth. And if I you are dirty up, Mother Earth. Say, me go left for me, I do. And come check for you. Leatherback turtles mistake plastic bags for the jellyfish they eat. So remember, leave only footprints. Conserve, use, and preserve our environment. Yeah, man, basically you're only hurting yourself when you hurt Mother Nature, you know? So just do your part. Use it, protect it, conserve it. It's all about balance.